They didn't think any human could go that fast, I guess they say, but I didn't either. I was surprised because I was still learning how to run even right. on the way to the Olympics. Different lanes, I didn't know. I, I just run along until they got tired and then I just kept going, you know. So. At the Rome Olympics of 1960, the Americans distinctly lacked world-class sprinters for the men's events. They failed to win gold in the 100 and 200 meters and rested their hopes on 28-year-old Otis Davis in the 400-meter final. I, I just thought whoever had to, you know, whoever won that would have to go go by me. I just felt good. I normally had trouble running that first 200 because I didn't know how to warm up anyway. Came to me, just move out. So I just moved out and, and uh, well, yeah, he came up and he passed me a little bit. And I saw him, I said, whoa, I can't let him do it. And at the end, I broke the tape and I saw his head. That's my mouth was on my, because I'd never seen anything, but I wanted to make sure I knew I won. You know, I didn't trust anybody. I didn't run like that. But I saw his head like that. Well, he saw I was ahead of him, so that's why he leaned in. He's supposed to do it. That's why he fell flat on his face, you know. Then they told me, say, you know, this guy hadn't been beaten, you know. You get, I said, what? <laughs> like that, you know. I was always surprised at myself doing stuff, I guess. I don't know. They were credited with the same time. But thanks to his final lunge, Davis had won the gold by two hundredths of a second and broken the world record. For a man who had taken up running at the age of 26 and finished only third at the Olympic trials, it was a remarkable achievement. So I grew up in the South, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And as a matter of fact, the sports writer about last year, he said, oh, it's too bad that you didn't go to the University of Alabama. He says, you chose to go someplace else. I said, shoot, when I went here, I couldn't go to the University of Alabama. And that was segregation then. And see, I was born 15 minutes from there, you know. Yeah, they were running around the track. Yeah, I saw it. That's how I got the idea to go out. I said, uh, I'd like to join your track team. He says, what do you do? I'm, sure, I'm glad he didn't say pole vaulters, man, because he said I need high jumpers. So I, I said, okay, you know. And I was high jumping. You should see all kind of screwed stuff. Man, that's the worst. I got a clipping back there. Scales me to look at it. I said, you ugly guy. That was me. I didn't. I just spring it. I could jump. I did 6-1 or something like that. And then... Then he said, oh, come over here. And then they were running a 100-yard dash. He brought the 100-meter the, 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 the guys in there. They got down in their start. And I, st I didn't know how to start. I just got up there. And he said, all right, go. And I just started running. And those guys were like that. And I started, I said, he got not in shape because I started moving up on him, you know. And he got excited again. Oh, would you run the two? I said, the what? 220? Oh, I said, come on. You know, it just got worse and worse. I thought it was going to go to 800 after that. No, it stopped, you know. Now I was like a kid in a candy store, you know. They act like some people don't even know me, you know. They know Prefontaine and all the people, they don't know me. But it doesn't matter, I'm doing my thing. I'm just glad to be recognized whenever I can get it, you know. Because I'm fulfilling a destiny that I never imagined I had. If I'd played basketball, I never would have done this, I don't think, you know. I follow the things that come in here from, you know, and I, I really, I'm, I'm feeling truthful about it. That's the only way I know to do it because uh, I just feel fortunate that he's using me to do it, you know.